Ivan the Remarkable True Story of the Shopping Mall Gorilla by Katherine Applegate, illustrated by G. Brian Karras. For everyone who loved Ivan. In a leafy calm and gentle arms, a gorilla's life began. The baby was born in the tropical forest in Central Africa. He was part of a large family of Western lowland gorillas. The troop included babies, juveniles, females, and a male leader, the silverback. The more the baby gorilla grew, the more he played. The more he played, the more he learned. He rode on his mother's back. He listened to the hoots and the grunts and chest beats of his father. He watched the older gorillas, clever and quick, as they wrestled and chased and swung from the vines. He did not learn about humans until it was too late. Poachers with loud guns and cruel hands stole the little gorilla and another baby. After thousands of miles and endless days, in a black, damp crate, at last came light and fresh air. The jungle, green with life, was gone. The gorillas had traveled halfway around the world to Tacoma, Washington. A man who owned a shopping mall had ordered and paid for them, like a couple of pizzas like a pair of shoes. People cooed and laughed and held the babies. They dressed them in human clothes and fed them human food. The shopping mall owner ran, ran, ran a name the babies contest. The winning names were Burma and Ivan. One dark day, soon after the babies arrived in their strange new world, Burma died. And without her, Ivan was all alone with too much left to learn. While he was little, Ivan was cute and cuddly. For three years, he lived in a home like a little human child. He slept in a bed and he went to baseball games. He held babies and rode on a motorcycle. He had to learn many things gorillas in the wild don't ever need to know. One thing Ivan didn't need to learn was how to eat. The more he ate, the more he grew, and the more he grew, the less he could live a human life in a human house. A cage in the mall became Ivan's new home there wasn't much to do. Sometimes Ivan watched TV. Sometimes he played with an old tire. Sometimes he finger painted, signing the papers with his thumbprint. Mostly, he watched the humans watching him. Ivan was about 13 when his coat began to shimmer with silvery white hairs. He had grown into a silverback gorilla. In the jungle, he would have been ready to protect his family, but he had no family to protect. And year after year passed. People began to grow angry about Ivan's lonely life. Children and adults wrote letters and signed petitions and held protests. Ivan lived in his cage without the company of other gorillas for 27 years before he was sent on another journey. This time, the hands were gentle. Zoo Atlanta wasn't a jungle. It was a place with walls. Still, the breeze carried jungle sounds and scents. Scientists who understood the needs of gorillas helped Ivan adjust slowly, carefully, and gently to his new life. Finally, it was time. Was Ivan ready? Cameras clicked, reporters watched. When Ivan stepped onto the cool green grass, 
the sunlight gleaming on his silver hair, people cheered and laughed and wept with joy. Ivan, the shopping mall gorilla, was in a place with trees and grass and other gorillas at last. In leafy calm, in gentle arms, a gorilla's life began again. So these pages are about Ivan. The facts of Ivan's early life are not well recorded, but as far as we know, Ivan was born in 1962 in what is now the Dem Democratic Republic of the Congo. He was about six months old when he was caught by poachers, traders who are illegally capturing animals and often kill them. It's unclear what happened to Ivan's family, but he was seized with another gorilla, a young female, most likely the infant of a different mother from Ivan's troop. The two babies were shipped to the B&I Circus store in Tacoma, a shopping center that frequently displayed wild animals, including an elephant, a seal, and chimpanzee, to attract customers. To advertise the latest acquisition, the B&I sponsored a contest to come up with the best names for the baby. The names had to begin with a B and an I. The winner received $500. The little female gorilla, Burma, died shortly after her arrival in the United States, but Ivan survived. For the next three years, he lived in the home of a family who ran the pet store at the B&I. While there, Ivan had a very human existence. He particularly liked fried chicken, dinners, and swinging from lamps and curtains. When he grew too big to handle, around the age of five, Ivan was placed in an enclosure at the B&I and spent much of his time in a small, 14 by 14 foot steel and cement room. He quickly became a popular attraction and was known as the shopping mall gorilla. This was little for Ivan to do in his days, although he seemed to enjoy finger painting and he often watched television. Many children grew up visiting Ivan regularly. They would stare into his eyes or press their hands to the Ivan's window, waiting for him to pound on the glass as he dashed by. During the 27 years Ivan lived in this cage, people became more aware of the needs of captive wild animals. The idea that animals need habitats that mimic their natural environment, as well as daily stimulation in the company of others of their own kind. And this seemed to be a new approach to their care. In 1990, when Ivan's story was featured in National Geographic documentary, The Urban Gorilla, the plight became known widely. Several newspapers covered his story. In fact, I first learned about Ivan in 93 when I came across an article in New York Times called Gorilla Socks in a Mall as His Future is Debated.